book of Luke. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be saved. How about y'all? Glad to be saved. Luke chapter 16. Familiar passage of the scripture today. It's sort of been on my heart all week. And uh, we'll give you what the Lord's put on our heart. and We'll let you be on your way. Miss Tammy fried some uh, okra this morning. And uh, I've been snacking on it. We may not have any when we get home for dinner. Uh, it's hard not to snack on it. Amen. Luke chapter 16, a very familiar passage of Scripture. <clears throat> and I will say this, is probably one of the least uh, preached about subjects in our day. Because, Brother Frankie, a lot of people are so afraid of trying to offend somebody that they are afraid to preach on the truth anymore. But it's still the truth. In Luke chapter 16, verse 19, it says, And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there's a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid in his uh, gate full of sores, desiring to be fed of the, with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried into the angels under Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Now notice the contrast there. Abraham, the, the, the beggar went into Abraham's bosom, which is a type of an Old Testament paradise or heaven. And the rich man died and it just said he was buried. In verse 23 it said, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, Seeing Abraham afar off, uh, he said, far off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said unto the Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you. Thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Thank you for the blessings of the day. Thank you for the good singing, or the good choir singing, the good special singing. And Lord, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for all these that came in the house of God today. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd open our hearts and we may hear what the Spirit of God may say unto us this morning. God, I pray that you'd give us delivered grace. I pray, God, that you'd let me empty myself that I may be full of the Holy Ghost. Here today, I pray, God, save someone that may be lost in the house of God. And Lord, we'll thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Here's what he says in Luke chapter number 16. We have an account, Brother Benji, of two men, two separate men. And one man, the Bible says, was carried after his death in the Abraham's bosom type of the Old Testament paradise. And Brother Michael, the rich man, died and was buried. Contrast there, and the Bible said, and in hell, he lift up his eyes. And I want to preach about and in hell this morning. Now, I said just a few minutes ago that hell is a very uh, touchy subject for a lot of people nowadays. And hell is a subject that a lot of churches, a lot of preachers, a lot of pulpits have become silent about. And when's the last time you uh, turned on your radio or flipped on the TV and heard a preacher preach about hell anymore? A lot of what we have today is preachers preaching about positive thinking, preaching about the uh, uh, success and, and trying to preach about prosperity. But the Bible's real clear about this, Brother Warren. There's a place called hell. There's a place called hell in Jesus Christ himself. Just because it's not preached about, Brother David, doesn't mean there's no hell anymore. Hell is still as real today as when, we, when, when the Bible pinned this down and when Jesus said it some 2,000 years ago, the Bible is still clear about hell. It's just as real about hell today as it ever has been. As a matter of fact, the Bible said it has enlarged itself because men and women, boys and girls have flocked into hell. And broad is the road that leadeth to destruction. Narrow is the road that leadeth to life. Hey, listen, I'm telling you this morning, hear the preacher today. There's a place called hell, and it's very real. Jesus Christ himself preached about hell. 
As a matter of fact, he preached 13 times more about hell than he did about heaven. He was so, he was, Jesus was so emphatic about people going to hell that he preached to them that they shouldn't go there. He said, you must be born again and that's the only way to miss hell is to be born again by the grace of God. Amen. So Jesus preached about hell and it's a real place. And brother, and brother Dean, it's real people go to hell. I hear a lot of people say about Luke chapter 16, a lot of people say, well, brother Mark, Luke chapter 16 is just a parable. But wait a minute. He named names. In parables, he said a certain man, a certain man had, had, four, had two sons, an elder son, a younger son. He named names here. He said that there's a place called hell. And in hell, this, this rich man lift up his eyes. In, in heaven, hey, in paradise, a, a Lazarus there in paradise. But in hell, the rich man is burning in hell. Today. What's the sad fact about hell? The sad fact is this is that people are sitting on church pews all across America, all across our land, and will go to hell when they die. I, it's one thing to go to hell from the deepest, darkest parts of Africa. It's one thing to go to hell from a place that's never heard the gospel. It's one thing to never go to a place that a, that a man or a boy or a girl has never heard a preacher preach on hell. It's one thing to go to hell from there. But it's another thing altogether to go to hell from a place, a Baptist pulpit. I ain't a Baptist pew today. Amen. How sad it is to go to hell from a church that preaches the gospel week in and week out and you heard preachers preach on hell. How sad it is to go to hell from a church pew today. Amen. Amen. Hell's for eternity. Hell's for eternity. Amen. And it's, hey, and eternity's a long time, Brother Jerry. Eternity's a long time. And can I ask you a question this morning before I move on? Are you willing to take the chance to go to hell? Are you, you said, preacher, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in hell. Are you willing to take that chance? I don't believe there's a place called hell. Why would God put you in hell? Are you willing to take that chance, young lady? Sir, hey, ma'am, are you willing to take a chance that there is no hell? Are you willing to take a chance that God won't put you in hell? Mm-mm. Give you four things here this morning. I'll go home. Watch this. It sure is quiet today. It ought to be quiet when we talk about hell. Hey, I'm telling you, hell ought to disturb two groups of people here this morning. Hell ought to disturb those that are saved by God's amazing grace, Brother Derek. Hell ought to bother us knowing that we know people, we know people that are going to hell this morning and we're doing nothing about it. Brother Frank, it ought to bother us that we know people all around us, family members that are dying without God, Brother Larry, and going to hell and we're doing nothing about seeing people saved. How sad that is. It ought to bother you here this morning that you're not saved. If you're unsaved this morning, you know, hell ought to bother you. It ought to bother you to know that there's a place called hell. Give you a few things this morning and we'll go home. Watch this. Number one, look at the fire in hell. Luke chapter 16, the Bible says in verse number 23, And in hell he lift up his eyes, seeing, uh, seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, Father, uh, he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. The fire, hey, the fire in hell. The fire, hell, hell is not a parable, it's a place and souls of men burn and burn and burn and burn and never burn up. They go to a place called hell and they never burn up. Why? Because there's a fire, eternal fire in hell. My Lord. Brother Mark, there's a fire so hot, they say the fire in hell is so hot, it's, you can't see it. They say the hottest fire that you've ever been recorded, if they call it a white fire, and it's never, Brother Frankie, you can't see it. It's invisible. But it's so hot, you can't get close to it. That's what hell is. That's what hell is. Amen. Mark chapter number 9. Don't turn. Mark chapter number 9, verse number 47. He said, verse number 42, he talks about, talks about hell. He said, whoever shall offend one of these little ones and to believe in me, it is better that he am, uh, for a millstone hanged about his neck and were cast in the sea. Jesus said, I'm telling you something. It's important to hear the gospel. 
Verse 42, he said, you let these young people get around the gospel. Right. Amen. He said, if you'll, Brother Benji, he said, if you'll offend one of these young people, you offend one of these young ones, he said, it's better that we put a millstone around your neck and put you in the, in the, in the sea and drown you. That's how, that's how important he thinks about the gospel. Hey, Brother Mark, he says the gospel ought to be heard by the young people. Hey, the gospel ought to be heard from the, from the young people. On the, hey, listen, they said this the other day. They was talking about uh, Emily's little baby uh, 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 kicking and going on. And they said when the preacher starts preaching, it really starts moving. And I said, it's like John the Baptist leaping in his mother's womb. Amen. But I'm telling you, listen, they ought to hear that. They aren't Brother Ridge and you and Allison. That, that, that baby ought to hear the gospel nine months before it's ever here. Yeah, Amen. And that's what Jesus said. He said, if you, let, you offend one of these little ones from getting the gospel, from coming unto me, he said, I'd rather you, he said it'd be better for you to get a rock and tie it around your neck and throw you in the sea. Now, here's what he, also what he says here. Listen to what he says. He said, if I hand offend thee, cut it off. He says, it's better for thee to enter lame than having uh, two hands and go to hell. If you, all you can do is scratch off those lottery tickets, if all you can do is punch into your, in your phone or your computer and pull up those uh, nasty websites, if that's all you can do is uh, go down there and to, to the casino and gamble all your money away, if that's all you can do is do that, he said, it's better to cut your hand off and go to heaven with two hands than go to hell with, with uh, one hand than go to hell with two. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. He said, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Well, preacher, I just don't believe it's that hot. You'll see. You'll see. Amen. If I foot offend thee, cut it off. Better to enter into the halt in the life than having two feet be cast into hell where the fire is not, never, is never shall be quenched. The worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. He said, if I, I offend thee, take your finger and pluck it out. He said, it's better to go to heaven. He said, it's better to enter in the kingdom of God with one eye and having two eyes and go to hell fire. Brother, he said, Jesus said, hell has a fire in it, and it's so hot, Brother Ronald. He said, it'd be better to cut your hand off or cut your foot off or pluck your eye out to go to heaven with one eye or one foot, one hand, than go to hell where the fire is never quenched and the worm dieth not. He said, it's better to do that. My Lord, I wouldn't go to hell for nobody. Amen. Yeah, I wouldn't go to hell for nobody. Hey, place, hell is a place of fire. It's never quenched. Never quenched. Hell is a place where the fire is never quenched. Where the worm dieth not, where your soul never dies. You think about going to hell where God, listen, you think about going to hell and burning forever, Brother Scott, never burning up. Going to hell, Brother Kevin, and burning, for, and, and burning, and burning, and burning. Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but the worst thing can happen to you is to be burned. Yeah, man. You seem like you can't, Brother Warren, you can't get relief from being burned. You ever burned your hand on a stove? You ever burned your arm in the wood stove? That's just a touching, that's just a drop in the bucket. That rich man said, hey, hey, send Lazarus, send that nasty, send that nasty uh, beggar that the dogs came and licked his swords. Send, hey, Lazarus, send, uh, Abraham, send Lazarus, send him down and let him just dip the f tip of his finger in water and let me put it in my, what is that going to do? That's not going to, that's not going to quench your thirst. No, no, no. That won't even, that's not, but he said, I'm burning so bad. I'm burning up this fire so hot. I'll take anything to try to get some relief in this. Amen. Amen. Hey, what are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you this morning, God said there's a fire in hell. You better be careful that you don't go. First, second Thessalonians chapter one, verse number eight. He said, and the flaming fires taking vengeance on them that know not God. Flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of, Jesus, of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power 
who shall, hey, he said, a flaming fire of vengeance and shall be punished, shall be punished. Well, I don't believe God will send anybody to hell. I don't believe a loving God will send anybody to hell. Well, let me ask you this, ma'am, sir. Hey, young person, I don't believe God will send anybody, young person, I don't believe God will send anybody to hell. Brother Kevin, what's God supposed to do with you? Brother David, where, where's God supposed to put a, a Christ rejecter? What's, what's God supposed to do with that one that's turned God away, turned Christ away? What's he supposed to do with it? He, hey, Brother Michael, where's he supposed to put that one that's turned the gift of God away? That's why, hey, hey, listen, by the way, hell wasn't even, wasn't even made for you. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. And you're going to be trespassing in hell if you go to hell this morning. Yeah, man. There's a fire. There's a fire in hell. I'd make sure I wasn't going. Amen. Hey, there's a fire. A fire of vengeance for those that reject God's gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, underneath your feet this morning, seven miles down, they say seven to ten miles down, underneath your feet, there's a rich man screaming for a drop of water. Tormented, tormented in the flames. The burning fire burns the soul forever and ever. And they never burn up throughout eternity. That man screaming for a drop of water. My Lord. 2,000 years ago, Brother Keith, he fell in there and he got into hell. And now 2,000 years later, the Bible says he lifts up his eyes. That means he's continually lifting up his eyes. Hey, he's continually looking up, trying to get Abraham's attention, trying to get Isaac to come and dip his finger in water that he could get a drip, just a drip, just a drop and a drip of water on his soul. My Lord, how sad. Ye yeah, Lord. Amen. Look at number two. Not only is the fire of hell, but look at the fright of hell. Understand that hell will be a place of total darkness. Not one, one ray or one beam of light. Absent of light. Absent of light. Total darkness. The Bible said they'll be cast in the lake of fire with fire or brimstone, total darkness. Tormented there, tormented there, total darkness. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to be nowhere that's got total darkness in it. Here's an amazing thing to me, brother brother uh, uh, Benji. You could take, turn all these lights off, get this place pitch black, couldn't see your hand in front of your face, and then just over here in the corner, strike a match and make a lighter lighter, and you could see that light. Oh, the light... Hey, the light pushes back all darkness. But you think about it. The place, brother, Doug, where there's no light. None. Zero. How sad that is. Man and woman, boy and girl, they're, they're stumbling around in the darkness trying to search for a way out. Think for, think, think for a minute with me. Use your imagination for a minute with me. Let, let understand this morning that they're stumbling around in the, in, the, in the halls of the dam, Brother Frank, trying to get a place to get out, stumbling around, beating up against each other, bumping into the walls, trying to find a door, a way out of hell, and there's no way out of hell, and they're just total darkness, total darkness. Mm. How sad to go to hell, total darkness. Total darkness. Can't see your hand in front of your face. Amen. We were, several years ago, we were up at uh, Linville Caverns. Is that called Linville Caverns? We got way back here in the back, and the guide took us back there, Brother Mark, and he turned the lights off. And just for a moment, Brother Tim, it was total darkness. We thought, you couldn't, you couldn't do that and see your hand in front of your face. I thought that's what hell's like. And Brother Jerry, he said, if you were back here, way back in, Brother CJ, if you were way back in here, uh, he said, how would you get out? How would you get out if there's no light, no nothing? And there's a, there's a river or a little stream that comes down through the middle of that thing. And I thought to myself, I know how I'd get out. I'd follow the water of life. Take me right out. I, 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 listen, you may tell you how to get out of hell. You better get to the water of life. 
You tell you how to get out of hell, you better find, find the light. Hey, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. He said, I'm the way, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. God have mercy. Amen. Just looking for a door, looking for a way out. Looking for a way out. All their, hey, all their life, they, they thought they had, the thing, had this world in, in, in the palm of their hand. This rich man thought he had it made. And can I say this? The, the beggar didn't go to heaven because he is poor. The rich man didn't go to hell because he is rich. Amen. He went to hell because he rejected Jesus Christ. He went to heaven because he knew the Lord. And here's a rich man today. He, in, in his palace, in his, in his lifetime, hey, he had it made. He thought he had the world by the tail. He thought, brother, he thought, brother Vance, he thought everything was working out his way. But all of a sudden, his heart stopped beating and he quit breathing and he was buried and in hell, darkness all around him. Think about total, complete, complete darkness. No hope of ever seeing the light of day again. Lord, have mercy. Hell is a fire. Hell is a darkness. The darkness overtakes you. The darkness pushes you down. It's the pressure that the darkness puts upon you. And they say as the deeper you go in the ocean, the more pressures from the ocean's uh, water is pressing on you. But you think about going to hell. Beneath all of that, the pressure of darkness pushing you further and down, further down, further down. You say, preacher, I don't believe all that. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. You say, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. It don't matter. It don't matter. You don't have to believe it. There's still a hell. There's still a hell. Whether you believe there's a hell or not, Brother Frank, there's a hell. Amen. I just don't believe that. You believe in heaven, don't you? You see, heaven wouldn't be heaven if you sent, it, sent sinners to heaven. Heaven would be hell, Brother Doug. Brother Kevin, it doesn't matter if we believe in hell or not. It's still there. Let me give you a couple more right quick. Y'all all right? Give you a couple more right quick. And so there's the fire in hell. There's the frightening of hell, the darkness there. And look in verse number 27. Verse 26, he says, there's a gulf fixed between us, and you can't come. In verse 27, the rich man said this. He said, I, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that, that you would send us thou him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. This rich man said, I've got five brothers at my house. We lived like we wanted to live before, we, before I died. We partied. We had a good time. We did anything we wanted to do. We never give a thought to God or God's Son. We lived like we wanted to live without ever giving thought of eternity. But now I'm in eternity. Now I'm in hell. Now I'm in this place of torment. Can you send Lazarus back to my father's house? Look at the family in hell. Can you, send, can you send Lazarus, Brother Ronald, back to my father's house? I got five brothers. But I don't want them to come here. All of a sudden, this man didn't care about. He lived sumptuously every day. He lived like he wanted to every day. But all of a sudden, Brother Mark, he was concerned about the eternity of his five brothers. I've heard this said all my Christian life, Brother Dean. If we would go to hell for five seconds, we'd all be start, become soul winners when we got out. Probably wouldn't even take five seconds. But here's the family. He said, hey, send Lazarus, send that stinking, nasty uh, beggar to my father's house. Who ate, hey, he ate crumbs from the table that we dropped in the floor. Send him to my father's house. Let him testify. Let them tell them about this place called hell. Evidently, evidently, Lazarus must have told him about hell in their lifetime. 
Well, why would he do that, Brother Mark? Hey, Lazarus, Brother Dean, must have told the rich man about hell, Brother Keith, because, Lazarus, because the rich man said, I want Lazarus to tell him. He told him, about, told him about hell to me. I want him to tell on five brothers. Don't come here. Don't come here. Amen. Ah, my. Don't come to this terrible place, place of torment. He didn't want his family to come there. But brother, brother Benji, there is no family in hell. All are under the same condemnation. All are under the same punishment. Go to the same hell that Adolf Hitler went to. Go to the same hell that every other wicked, vile uh, 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 person you have ever can imagine. Go to the same hell they went to. Go to the same hell that that person has never, never did anything wrong in this lifetime. Moral, upstanding person, but they didn't accept Jesus Christ. Go to the same hell they go to. See, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how good you are. The rich, the, uh, the thief on the cross looked at Jesus and said, Remember me when thou enterest into thy, thy kingdom. Remember, hey, I'm a thief. I'm a thief and a robber. Remember me. So it doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how bad you are. Hey, all that matters is that you're saved by God's amazing grace. That's all that matters. There's no family in hell. There's no friends in hell. I was talking to a preacher year, several years ago, and he said he, he preached this guy's funeral. He said he's lost and going to, went to hell as far as his testimony in this life, Brother Mark. And he said, I went to the graveyard, and, and that's where they just did a, fa a graveside service. And, and there, brother, brother Josh, he said, we got there, and he said they turned on ACDC for music for this guy. He said, wicked bunch of wicked bunch of people. And he said, after I left, he said, I, I got in my car. And he said, I watched all of them take liquor bottles and pour them on the grave of their friend that died. How vile, how wicked is that? How vile and how wicked. But you know what I'll tell you one thing, Brother Larry? There won't be no friends in hell. There won't be no friends in hell. They won't be mothers in hell. They won't be dads in hell. There'll only be people that's lost without God. Those that's just rejected Jesus Christ. There won't be any mothers or dads. There won't be wives or, or husbands. No, just be those ones that rejected Christ. Think about this, brother. Think about a dad living such a wicked life that he caused his son to go to hell. You think that son's going to try to fool with his daddy down in hell? No. No, 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 no. He'll hate, hey, he'll, he'll hate him. That's why I talk about gnashing of teeth. They'll chew on each other for pain. Hey, that's why the Bible talks about gnashing of teeth. God help us today. See the reality of hell. Hell's a real place, and the, and the rich man died and went to hell. And if you don't get saved, you'll die and go to hell. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. It's vital that you understand. You have no family and friends. There won't be a party in hell when you get there. There won't be no party in hell. What's the matter with you? You that, you that blind, you that ignorant, you that dumb that you think there'll be a party in hell. There'll never be a party. They're not a party in hell. How can you have a party in hell when everybody's in torment and in pain and burning and, and gnashing of teeth? How's that party? It's impossible. Amen. You better understand there's no friends, no family in this place called hell. Listen, this man didn't even want his own family to come there. He didn't want his own family to come there. Give you this last one, I'm done. Miss Norma, if you would get a song together. Don't close your Bibles yet, I ain't through. Miss Norma can close hers. Look at verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. <clears throat> Send that nasty, sore-ridden Lazarus. That he may dip his filthy finger. And the Bible doesn't say that, but you, he, he, that's exactly what happened. <clears throat> he, he can't, he, listen, he don't see Lazarus in his glorified body. All this rich man sees, Brother David, is Lazarus as he was. 
He said, let him dip his old nasty, dirty finger, infected, diseased finger in water. Cool my tongue, for I'm tormenting this flame. And Abraham said, son, remember, maybe one of the worst things you'll ever have in life, and if you go to hell, is your memory. You'll remember this sermon today. You'll remember God speaking to your heart about being born again. You'll remember that. He said, besides all this, he said, remember, besides all this, verse 26, besides all this, there's a great guff fixed. Fixed. That means it's not moving. So that when you would come, would pass from hence, you cannot. Neither can they pass unto us that would come from thence. The finality of it. So you've got no family in hell, then there's the finality of hell. Understand, when a person goes to hell, it's forever. It's forever. You won't spend five years, seven years, ten years, even thirty years. You won't spend forty years, fifty years in hell. It's forever. It's forever. Dying, dying, but never die. Dying, but never die. And it's important to realize, hey, hell is for eternity. And there's no way of escaping. There's no way of ever getting out once you're there. Well, preacher, when I go to hell, I'll ask Jesus to save me. Be too late then. You see, you made a decision whether you're going to be born again on this side of eternity, not the other side. You make, you make your decision on this side. There's nowhere in the Bible that talks about a place called purgatory. It's, there's not in the Bible. The rich man died and went to hell. Not purgatory, hell. And there's no praying somebody out once they're there. Mm. Rich man's never, he, listen, now you think about this. This rich man has never, ever gotten out. 2,000 years later, He's still there. 2,000 years later, he's still in hell. There's no way out. No way out. He's there today screaming for one drop of water. Look at verse 29. This is what he said. He said in verse 27, 28, he said, I've got five brothers, send Lazarus and tell them about him." And Abraham said in verse 29, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. He said, They got the Old Testament Bible. And they got the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, 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 Father Abraham. But if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. He said, If they hear not Moses or the prophets, neither they would be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I know one rose from the dead. Amen. They hung him on a cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Bible said he gave up the ghost and died. He took his blood and put it on the mercy seat of God. And God's, God's requirements, God's sacrifice for sin was satisfied. They put him in a grave. For three days and three nights, he stayed in the grave. And all of a sudden, on that first, hey, on that first resurrection morning, he got up, he got up, thank God. Amen. And he's alive forevermore. Sitting on the right hand of God in the heavens. Brother Doug, he arose. And still, Brother Kevin, they refused to hear. They'll believe. Hey, the rich man said, they'll believe. They'll believe. If one come from the dead, but they haven't. You haven't. Let's stand to our feet, heads bowed, eyes closed. Hell is forever now. Hell is forever. Think about this. Never having a chance. Never having a chance to get out. Salvation's today. Salvation's today. Today is the day of salvation. It's your day of salvation. If you're unsaved this morning, it's your day of salvation. The Bible said, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart.
Preacher, I've heard that all my life about hell. I've heard it all my life about hell. It doesn't mean it's not there. It hadn't changed a thing just because we've heard about it. Preacher, I'm not saved today. Would you just slip up your hand? I want somebody to pray for you. Take an old preacher and let him pray for you. Preacher, would you pray for me? Just slip up your hand, put it down. Straight up, straight down. Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you pray for me? One hand, he would say, Preacher, I am saved. But I'm not living like I should. Would you pray for me today? All over the church house today. God bless you. Appreciate your honesty. Live, not living like I ought to, preacher. Would you pray for me? Our Father, we love you. And Lord, you know every heart of every person sitting here this morning. Great number in the house of God. And Lord, I pray, God, today that you speak to each heart. And Lord, you know who's saved and who's not saved. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'd deal with them. May have not raised their hand, but they sure raised their hand in their heart. Pray, God, that you'd speak to them right now. Let conviction fall in their life. Smote them right there where they're at. Pray for that one that raised their hand about not being right with the Lord. Those that said, Preacher, I'm not living like I should. Pray for me. God help them. God help them. In Jesus' name. Thank you.